Hello, all, each and every person who is looking forward as to what is it that is to be done if data science is safe or not. Is a technical switch safe or not? Guys, each and everyone, welcome to another session with me, Varun on Tech Tablet. Well, just to let you all know, I am also traveling in the same boat with same queries, same confusion in my mind, and probably the same fear that you all are carrying right now. You know, totally unsure of what to do next highly unsure of how career or future would be but then there's one thing that we cannot leave hope and practice so that's the only two things that even i'm relying on and i would suggest that these are the only two things that each and every developer or each and every aspirant in fact each and every person should be relying on hard work and practice right or hard work and dedication or hard work and passion no matter whatever is the other combination hard work should be within the list of you know all what you have right so now talking about what is it that we would be looking in this series or in this video in specific we would be looking at the R language technical interview question and answers right now there's a small difference between what others are trying to do and what I'm trying to do I try to post interview question and answers and also explain them so that they would be useful for you in your interview right and all the questions that I have here would also be represented on the R Studio also in a while. Data science is too new to represent everything on the R language or to throw everything on the R Studio for you know development. But then given some time, I would be posting basics of R language, basics of TensorFlow and basics of Python also for data scientists so that they could also learn. Currently, I myself am in gather in, in knowledge gathering stages. So yeah, that's the thing guys And if in case you like my videos, you can follow me on my Facebook or on my Instagram ID at Warren Rao underscore Gemini Well Going forward. This is me. I used to work as an ABAPR or, or and an SAP UI5 Fiori consultant But then currently I'm in preliminary stages of learning IoT, AI, Python, machine learning, deep learning And I'm not sure. I'm not at all sure guys if this would take me to data science or Leonardo, but then it's just sailing. It's sailing. You know, the boat is just sailing. Let's see where it all goes. Right now, what all did we cover, and what all would we be covering? Right, we already covered you know a good number of questions on Python, TensorFlow, and related concepts. Now we would be looking at R language, which is the first part. In the upcoming videos, we would be looking at some more detailing in Python and TensorFlow and R language because these are the three most important languages that a data scientist cannot escape. You cannot just learn Hadoop and one language and become a data scientist, no. Machine learning and deep learning need to be learned. And deep learning and machine learning, it could be supervised, unsupervised, they are all part of Python, R, and Tensor. You have to go through them, right? So we've covered a lot of interview question and answers and we would be covering a lot of technical series at the earliest, right, as I told you development paradigm would also be covered. So now talking about R in specific, how would you explain R and what do you think R does? Well, it is basically guys an analysis software, which is used by quants or statisticians and data scientists. And there are also a lot of other people who would want to visualize data at the best. In 1993, Ross and Robert gentlemen designed this application or designed this tool, which has an extensive you know, options for graphics and also statistics. Now this means that in R you would be able to do and also represent all variety of algorithms with which include linear regression, logistic regression, time series analysis, and also statistical interference. I mean there, there are a lot that you can actually do here. And what is R written in? Well, most of the R is I mean most of the libraries that we see in R they are written in R also or R only which is again a combination of C sharp okay but then when heavy computational task is involved we also go into C C sharp and Fortran which are also used C++ I mean right the second one is what are the data structures in R that is used to make statistical analysis and also to create graphs well, you have some data structures like vectors, matrices, arrays, and data frames, okay? So you have to know about these data frames. Also, what they do, what is vectors, what is matrices, you've got to know all this, right? 
the next one that we have is how can you load a dot csv file in r well that's easy to load a, a, a dot csv file in r you need to give it a name and assign it with an arrow mark and when you do it all that you have to do is give the path i mean from where did you copy now let us say heart okay now heart is the name of my excel document and it is on my desktop so i am reading information from heart.csv and i am storing information into heart itself right so next time when i say heart it would give me the entire data that's been accessed or that is within heart.csv which is located on my desktop the fourth one is what are some important functions in r well these are some reading functions read data functions okay so now you have read.csv for reading csv files read sas this is for reading sas files read excel for excel sheets and you have read sav this is for spss data okay so these are the four variants of import functions that you have in r and what are the advantages of r well it's basically used for managing and manipulating your data there is no license restriction for r as such it's totally free and open to use and you can also learn r you can download r all of these can can be done without you going to any institute or even without you having to pay anything which means that it's totally free for use but then it runs on many operating systems okay and also it can be compatible with different hardware and it's also suitable for 32 and 64 bit processors so i think that should be good in order to call r an advantageous language for data scientists right so things like these are to be understood because they they are very crucial when you attend an interview and most of the times when you attend an interview you would be judged on how you are answering and your confidence because see you're not there to dance wherein or, or you're not there to sing wherein you would become normal after one or two minutes right this is just testing your knowledge even if you are scared you can just talk all that you have to do is unfreeze yourself when you are at an interview or keep yourself hydrated keep drinking water so that you don't show your you know tension or you don't show your anxiety on your face and then you just have to keep answering just keep going keep pushing keep learning keep talking to yourself about these questions and answers and i think that way i i really think and i believe that whatever interview you would be attending to that interview is yours you 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 have won it right so yeah what are eigen values and eigen vectors but well, eigen vectors firstly are for understanding linear transformations they are mostly into linear transformation understanding in data analysis we generally calculate eigen vectors for uh, let us say correlation and covariance or covariance of a matrix but then at the same time when you're talking of eigen values they are the directions along which linear transformation should be acting or should be compressing or should be stretching into right so eigen value which we are talking about it's basically a direction along a linear transform along which a linear transformation should act and what is eigen vectors eigen vectors are for understanding this linear transformation that we are talking about right so they are pretty much dependent on each other right so the seventh one that is how is how many sorting algorithms do we have guys now whenever you answer or whenever you are going through any of the questions in data science or for, the, for that case anywhere right so i would request you to pause the video for a second right and uh, then just try to think if you know it or not and then if you still are failing then i think you can make your choice well there are five types of sorting algorithms that we have the first one is quick sort bubble sort binary search algorithm merge sort insert sort bubble algorithm selection algorithm breadth first we have a lot of you know sorts and we have a lot of algorithm for instance if you want to talk about quick sort right now here what would be happening is uh, this is a method for placing the elements of random axis in an order so here they would all be placed just in an order you know just like one below another now this is quick sort 
very similarly if we look into bubble sort okay now here you have you know this is also referred to as sinking sort wherein you have repeated steps that keep happening okay and uh, the pass through of the list is repeated until the last and the final list is completely sorted okay so you know similarly you have uh, merge sort you have insertion sort you have breadthfist sort selection sort okay let us talk about selection sort that we have here uh, it is you know algorithm which has a, a comparison variant okay and in selection sort it would select a set of three or four based on some other values and then it would eliminate them so you know guys there are a lot many variants that you have available the eighth one is can you explain about confusion matrix or what is confusion matrix according to you in r okay now this is generally used whenever you want to test the accuracy of a model now let us say you've built a model it could be any variant guys it could be glm it could be naive base or it could be transformation fourier trans any of them when you want to check the correctness or when you want to check the accuracy of the model built you have to cross tabulate the observed and predicted values and calculate them so that you get the perfect result now what is a cross tabulated observed and predicted classes based table so here you have true 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 false false true and false false which happens to be a 2 by 2 matrix and in this matrix we you know display the observed and pred predicted classes and here we create a small confusion matrix with the library or, or with the package ca tool and this you know package or this uh, command that we have confusion matrix it would give us a tabulated value or tabulated list for the actual predicted values and also you would get it with an output so let us assume that there are 3 to 4 models that you are building in, in in on your system and after calculating the values of confusion matrix you would going by the numbers select the one that is best suitable for you right ninth one is what are t tests in r they are very easy to understand they are just used to determine if the if the mean of two groups they are equal or not so you have two groups you are testing their mean and if it's equal then t test is satisfied how do you work on a random forest well if you want to work on random random forest the first thing that you got to do is understand what random forest is random forest is a combination of decision trees so there's nothing much or out of the box that you got to do in order to work on random forest but then you have to build a lot of decision trees and bootstrap them onto the training sample right and then wherein each and every tree is considered uh, or wherein each tree begins a split is considered okay and these split decide if the if if the division is good or bad correct or wrong can be taken or no and how do how does the split happen well there is something called as the rule of thumb okay so it follows the rule of thumb and also talking about predictions there is something called as the majority rule that is followed okay so this is how you work towards a random forest and also decision trees and naive bayes and fourier and pca we would be talking about in the upcoming video interview series right so guys do not go anywhere stay there i'll be right back with another interesting video on our language for all of us to learn technically and for all the aspirants and dreamers to go ahead and crack your interview let us start doing well i really hope you enjoyed watching and also i believe that you learned something new at least a bit of it and if in case you did please hit the like button to let us know that you enjoyed watching the video and also use the comment section to let us know if there's any queries or if there's anything else that you want to add and also if you feel that this might be useful for at least a few share the video as it would be useful for them and also a bit for me thanks a lot have a great day this is me varun rao logging off